So I had about six hours to create it and uh, uh, changing instructions the entire time was for the 48-hour film festival. Let me show you the finished result and uh, then how I created it. All right, so I got the instruction uh, at about 6 a.m. in the morning on Sunday. He said he'd get it to me at 7 p.m. Saturday, but it was the 48-hour film festival, so it never exactly works out as planned. And all that I knew is he gave me the script and he told me that it was a Western. So immediately I did some research to see what are uh, Western title sequences that are easy to produce. So I looked over to forget the film, watch the titles. I saw a fistful of dollars. Looks like this. Ooh. A little bit of sound. Here we go. I saw a few, I saw a few others as well, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and then I stumbled on this one as well. <laughs> So there's two things that I took out of that. I love watching a YouTube video within a YouTube video. Essentially, all I did is I just, uh, you know, Googled uh, Western title sequences right there. Um, so I sent those two to him, and I was I said, I'm going to do something in between this. Uh, I got the comments back. Uh, one comment, I got fewer colors. And the other comment I got is, could you make it more like this? Now, this is the Sherlock Holmes uh, title sequence, and if you go to Art of the Title and search, search for uh, Sherlock Holmes, there is an amazing uh, breakdown of how it was created, essentially 14 people working around the clock for a few weeks, and I returned with, okay, we'll do a compromise between the two of those. So I decided to make, um, I decided to uh, take this, uh, use the shakiness of the camera and the, uh, the film effect of the old-timey film effect. Um, and then combine that with some illustrations that go from the photos. So I asked them to send me a couple of photos. Now, I didn't really know how to do the old-timey film effect. So I went to Video Copilot, and um, I found a tutorial on Old Film Look, which is the third tutorial they did back in 2005. If you don't know how to use After Effects, the greatest place to go uh, to learn it is After Effects basic training. It's free. It's great. Um, After Effects basic training, it's on videocopilot.net. Um, so what I did was I set up two cards in Photoshop. Here, let me uh, open up the cards. Uh, one of the cards looked like this. And the way that I created this, here, let me uh, just show you the layers right here. Uh, the way that I created it is I took a picture of a glass. And when I say I took a picture of a glass, what I mean is I took a picture of a bunch of different glasses. So here we go. Uh, this one was ugly. I found uh, the movie was called The Tall Glass of Revenge, so I decided to find a tall glass for it. And I used my um, my little light box that I've set up. Uh, I've set up in previous projects. I'll put a note. Um, I'll put a show note uh, somewhere uh, of a link to a blog post I did on how to create a lot uh, light box. Um, originally, I tried putting this. Uh, I tried putting this cup into it. I didn't think that looked great. So then I was photographing it with this cup. I turned it on its side. I don't know if you guys can see it, something like that. And it ended up working out, well, decently fine. So going back into the Photoshop document, what we have right here is here, let me just work through these layers one by one. Uh, what we have right here is we have a background layer that's white. Um, then we just have this uh, photo of a cup, which literally is just like a really lousy photo of a cup, even though I used a light box. I had a lousy camera. It was just a Canon. Uh, not, not like an SLR, just like a really shitty Canon. Uh, swearing? Yeah, I'll do that in my YouTube videos. Why not? I put a quick curves um, on it. I added uh, a layer that was just uh, beige. I added noise on top of that and a clipping mask. I uh, added this text, and then I used a liquify to make it fancier. Uh, and then I duplicated it to make it darker. Maybe I played with it a little bit on top of that. 
Um, I put a black and white. This one's actually interesting. I put a black and white with a, uh, a tint, a tint on it right there. And because there's a tint, it makes everything kind of that same uniform, old timey, whatever. Um, and then on top of that here, this one's interesting. I put a um, paper texture. Um, and I just kind of put that on multiply and then I put another paper texture on top of that on multiply If you want a paper texture just search for paper texture on Google or take a picture of a paper texture scan it in They're really easy to get and you can see that it adds a whole lot to this image right here That's just adding a paper texture right there. So I did this I did another one where I just um, Grabbed the name of actors and cut out a drawing by Dave McKean and set it up in an exact similar way uh, and I came up with this temp file that I then sent to the director, Carl. So just to show you that inside of After Effects, what I did right there is it was two layers that basically I just wiggled a little bit. Um, on top of them, I used the old film look that I learned from Video Copilot, uh, which to boil it down right there essentially came to... Ah, so many things open. Essentially came to grabbing a video of old film again google it uh and then uh and then just putting that on multiply on top of everything so here we go let's uh get rid of this 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 i found western fonts by googling western fonts some of them are awful and overused like bleeding cowboy and stuff are real, real gross uh, and some of them were actually nice so i found one that was good um, I found just 8mm vintage. I didn't use this, but it was a similar thing that I used. Uh, and then I downloaded it um, from YouTube by going to keepvid.com. I don't know if this site is legal, but I do know that it's awesome. So I used it. Enough said. So I sent him this uh, thing and he said, okay, looks good. Uh, so I went ahead with it. Uh, then the challenge became how to create my own illustrations because I didn't want to use other illustrations and as great as using things like ink splatters that I can find online are for a few of them I really wanted to create illustrations with the text so I asked him to send me um, send me some stills from the movie uh, in order to uh, in order to ink up or to do something with so he sent me these stills and uh, basically I went from uh, I, I just wanted to Photoshop and I turned them into black and white so from this to this right here you can see it's uh, it's really simple if you want to uh, turn something into black and white in Photoshop like that all you need to do is ah no don't save all you need to do is add a uh, black and white uh, adjustment layer uh, and then add a curves layer where you just do a really, 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 uh, you know, bleh. Here, let me double click this so I can show you. That's not what I wanted to do. Double click this so I can show you. You can see I just have a really exaggerated curves right here. Get that S curve for that huge amount of contrast. Makes it go from this to this. All right, from there I said, okay, I know that I want ink drawings um, that look pretty good. So I, I took out my inks. I took out what I had and I inked something that looked absolutely terrible. Hopefully you guys can see this. Well, not too hopefully. I inked this up. Um, I, I hope you can see how bad that looks. Um, if you can't, I'll scan it in and make it look bad like that. Realizing that using my own talents, I was going to get something that looked awful. Um, I decided to cheat a little bit. And by cheat a little bit, I don't mean apply a Photoshop uh, filter in order to make it work. By cheat a little bit, oop, let me get rid of that background sound. By cheat a little bit, I mean use a projector to project up the image onto a sheet of paper. So here we go. I'm just going to set this up like this and show you exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I grabbed the image in black and white. I uh, attached it to my digital projector, which I use for watching movies and teaching and all sorts of things. And you can see that right now it is on this sheet of paper. And so rather than trying to figure out the uh, dimensions myself, I just, I just used this. Hey, if it works, it works. And I went through and just like that, I really, really, really simply figured out where the eyes were. Now, where the eyes were, where the nose were, where everything was. Now, obviously, you do need to know how to draw in order to eventually take this to the inking stage. This is just to make it so you get those brief lines right there. So I spent about five minutes doing each of those. It took about a song uh, for each. Let's detach this from the projector, turn that off right there. Looks good. Uh, and then I had a sheet of paper that um, was, ah, that was significantly more detailed than this. Hopefully you can see that a little bit right there. Um, from that point, getting the uh, proportions or whatever you want to call it, uh, I went, here we go, past my light booth thing right there, 
and I went to my inking station, aka my kitchen table, filled up a jug with water, and I used a couple of tools in order to ink it up. I'm not gonna teach you how to ink, but I used um, my, my nib, which I love. Uh, I also used my little inkwell right here. I used a Sumi brush. I used a smaller brush. I used some microns, used a toothbrush for textures. I'm not gonna teach you how to ink right here. And uh, when I was done, here, here was uh, another, don't save. Uh, when I was done, ugh, that's gross, that's not what I want. Um, I went from this to this. So it just kind of looked nice right there. And there was a bunch of them that I did um, like that. Here, let me, uh, let me just show you them right here, uh, the ones that I inked up. It took about 20 minutes each to do all of them when all was said and done. Uh, so here we go. They just kind of this one I didn't end up using because it looked like balls. This one I also didn't end up using because I didn't like. But this one I used. I uh, I enjoyed that. Oh, can't zoom in this way. This one I kind of liked. This one I kind of liked. And again, oh, this one this one I I, I did like. Uh, in order to get that white right there, I had a uh, I had a white thing. I forget what I drew over it with it within uh, white. So anyhow, I went in. I scanned those in, and then I went back into Photoshop. So here we go. I'm going to uh, delete out of this. And I went ahead and I made a bunch of cards. So uh, cards that looked like this. So what, what are we looking at right here? Nothing too complicated. We just have a beige layer. On top of that, I, I did noise. So just filter noise, um, add noise, uh, some text, some text layer that doesn't have anything on it. Uh, here's the illustration. You'll notice that I have a little bit of a mask set up on it in order to just kind of put it in there like that. Um, some of the text I decided to play with a little bit, uh, just using the rasterizing and using the liquify, the black and white with a tint applied. Here's that texture, here's the texture, and when combined together, they actually look pretty good. So um, I went ahead and I did a bunch of cards like, uh, like that, and they look like, here we go, here we go, they look like this. So uh, this, is the, this is the one that I already showed you. Uh, here's one, here's another. Uh, and you can see it's just putting the text in right here. Um, I, there needed to be nine cards. I only did four or five illustrations, so I just kind of uh, put the uh, some ink splatters that I found online on some of the other cards and hoped for the best, hoped that it wasn't too big of a deal. Honestly, I could have used ink splatters for all of them, uh, but I didn't. Uh, so I, I then brought all of those cards into After Effects, and you can see that I have all of the cards into After Effects like this. Uh, I have them layered on top of each other. Each of them is jittered. Oh, this is the previous version. Let me uh, open up the most recent version. Wanted VO2. Looks good. And uh, just going to go to main right here. Again, I'm not going to teach you After Effects right here. That's beyond the scope of this. And uh, what I have set up right here is I have the cards, and I just have it so they're wiggling a bit. And then I have them coming in, and like I set them to 3D so they could come in, and then that wiggles a bit too, and this comes in. And then layered on top of that, I have a, uh, a mask thing that blurries and blurs and darkens. Here, let's turn that mask on. That blurs and darkens the outside edges, so it goes from looking like... Hold up. It goes from looking like this to looking like this. So just uh, just a little bit of a you know difference right there, and I learned that from the video copilot thing. And then I also have the grain, and all that the grain is is literally um, just eight millimeter stock put on multiply on top of it. Uh, and so what we're left with is what we had from the top. I didn't have all of the names in what we were done, so I needed to do a temp version of uh, just kind of temporary names that looked like this. I did it on low res. I sent it to Carl, the guy in charge of this 48 hour film festival. He said, cool, and uh, then he sent me the names and I kind of went through, re-rendered everything. There was a problem with it took forever. It took like 25 minutes and then it was a 700 megabyte fo folder that uh, couldn't be uploaded. Uh, I tried driving there in the 405, but hit five mile an hour traffic. Uh, so ended up sending him this half res uh, 60 megabyte H.264 version because we made for the best. Um, but I'm very happy with it. And in less than 10 hours, I had the title sequence that you saw at the beginning of this video. So big takeaways here. It's a matter of just developing that process. Like I already had that light box in place. I already had inking methods in place. Um, if you're interested in more title sequence sort of things, or how to use Photoshop, or how to use any of that, uh, click subscribe. It's all about developing the process. Uh, I'm going to be dealing with more videos in the future. Uh, hope you liked this, and thanks for watching.